Let's drop the green flag on this episode of the Talent Tank Podcast with your host, Wyatt Pemberton, bringing you the best, fastest, most knowledgeable personalities in Ultra 4 and off-road racing. Wow. What about that intro? Hey, this is Wyatt. Before we get into episode one, thank you. Thank you for clicking. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. This is totally uncharted territory for me. And just to get to this point where this podcast has even seen the light of day, it's an amazing feat. The learning curve, man, it's it's been steep. So I've learned so much. I need to refine some things. As this project goes forward, uh, we're gonna continue to strive to make them better and better and better. It's been fun. I hope you enjoy this first installment of the Talent Tank, despite some of the mic issues, despite some volume issues, and despite some content issues. It's not perfect. It's a, it's a roller coaster. So thank you for subscribing. This episode one is good. I promise you know, you're going to love it. And I promise as we go forward in time, the next installments are going to get better and better and better. So now onto the show and listening to Miles Mike over Power Mind from 750 miles away. Thank you again. All right, here we go. This is going to be uh, episode one, season one of The Talent Tank. We're working on making this the uh, the foremost spot where you're going to come for information of behind the scenes, personal, what goes on with each racer, their teams, their families. This is going to be a uh, social media of us getting together and you getting to be the beneficiary of everything that takes to get us to the races, guys off the start line, guys to the the finish line and the celebratory beers afterwards. Today on episode one, I'm you know super blessed to have longtime friend of mine, Miles Hasselkist, you know, also known as Badass for some some of you, or uh, the voice of Hammertown for the the lion's share of the rest of everybody. We're gonna go into uh, Miles' history today. We're gonna talk about some of, how he got some of those nicknames. I'm really excited about this concept. Came up this year in February, right around uh, right after. King of the Hammers 2019 that there was there's a lot missing a lot of background stories I, I think the Hammer King has done just an amazing job when you say Miles given absolutely yeah and why thank you for uh, keeping me involved you know we've been buddies for a long long time and I'm excited to help I'm excited to be here and it's a cool concept I think there's a, a lot of stuff like you said missing that we can bring to the table and so Miles uh, Miles involvement you know with myself we've been friends what well, since about 2008 before we get in here too far Let's talk about these nicknames. Let's close this loop. Badass. <laughs> well, I mean, this could go a couple different ways. Uh, my favorite version is uh, I was arm wrestling Chuck Norris and I beat him. So, uh, no, that, that didn't really happen. Uh, the, the real story was, uh, you know, my, my circle of friends, we talk a lot of smack. We give each other a hard time. If I don't give you a hard time, I probably don't like you or I'm not going to talk to you much. So for a while, I always said I'm a badass because I've never broken a bone. I've never had stitches. So I just, you know, that was my, my go-to thing at a party. You know, I'd, you know, talk to smack and whatever and and my buddy joe martin called me out he's like you need to prove it it's like all right you know ha 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 the next morning we we get to going and he's like i'm driving so we head up to the tattoo shop i get bad on one cheek and ass on the other cheek and uh i've had that for 10 plus years and it's uh it's turned into a pretty good party favor Uh, i'm not gonna say i'm proud of it it is embarrassing from time to time but it's, it's proven to be a good time lots of people have seen it if you haven't, you probably will. It's out there. Uh, there's lots of people that have no clue it's there, and there's a lot of people that know about it. Eh, if you can't make fun of yourself, who can you make fun of? And uh, you just got to roll th- with what you do, and I, uh, I make the best out of life and have fun with it. Now, I've seen it many times, but the most famous time I saw it was on back door, <laughs> bat on one cheek, yep. ass on the other cheek. We were... Uh, qualifying for lcq with a uh, matt enix jab nasty and uh it was the year where it, i can't remember if it rained or snowed the night before so back door was super wet so we planned on winching so we you know we tear up get to back door i haul out uh, you know i hop out get the winch on we winch up he makes it almost the top catches fire because he had little bitty wire under his winch and we got up it and uh, so i get the fire extinguisher put it out and i throw everything in get him started he tears off so i got two fire extinguishers in my hand on back door and i just yosemite sam style just shoot him off badass hanging out that <laughs> that was a fun good time and there's an imposter out there right but there's a way to tell 
the imposter from you because I believe yours has one of your letters is underlined with a scar. <laughs> what's what's that story? So that was a uh, another interesting night. Like I said, we 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 used to party pretty hard. There again, I always say I'm a badass, so I whipped it out, and then all of a sudden somebody had a ninja star, so we started throwing ninja stars back and forth. I lost because it stuck right under the A. <laughs> and uh, you and took it's a there. throwing star to the ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not proud of it. Hey, you know, when you're partying, stuff happens, and uh, you got to have fun with life. Oh, you do. I I really appreciate your pictures you send me and my wife and you know everyone on their birthdays. It's always have a badass birthday, and it's a picture of your ass. <laughs> I love sending that out, and I love the reactions. And uh, like I said, you got to just have fun with it. And if you can't make fun of yourself, who can you? You know. Well, folks, there it is. That is the backstory on Mr. Miles Hasekus. And that's the short story, because there's lots and lots of stories out there. Some's recorded, some not, but, uh, you know. <laughs> Let's get this interview going. Let's roll into where you're from. Funny story, though, we're actually from the same hometown. We actually grew up in the same town of Paola, Kansas. But I didn't know Miles until I was... Until you moved to Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah I long lived in Texas. You know, I was, in my, I was 30 years old and started racing... XRA because I wanted a set of sticky tires. It was, they were hard to, they, they used to be hard to get. They're not hard to get anymore. Yeah. We, the first time we met was in actually in Alabama. It wasn't even in Paola, Kansas. So I think one time in Paola, I was in Boy Scouts and we played paintball. And I remember you had a low rider truck that I thought was cool. And then I shot you and you shot me and that was about it. And that was it. That, I think I, you told me that before. <laughs> I still, I still, I still, re, I still don't remember. I, I, I shot you. Going on. Uh, that's, that's, that's true. Many, many have, I'm sure. Many probably want to. So, yeah. So, back in February, you know, King of the Hammers was going on. What a great year. Uh, it, actually, every year, D- Dave continues it, to outdo himself. Um, every year it gets bigger and better. And I say that every time, and every time it does, it, every time it's bigger and better. Oh, man. I, I, I mean, just absolutely tell you what. I, I approached you about this. I said, you know, what if we started doing this kind of a, this, this piece about the lifestyle, just a lifestyle piece about. I mean, because we always say Ultra 4 family because it is more than just racing. There's so much behind the scenes, family, friends. So uh, we be, I'm we zero together. techie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We, I mean, we've uh, done some wheeling trips and not all racing. And not just us, just our little circle out of Kansas, but guys from all over. I mean, you know, routinely going on trips with guys from Arizona or California or, you know, the Northeast. So it's. It is. It, it is our family. I mean, it's it's been an amazing ride, but everyone has known since uh, you know Pirate has gone away and Ultra Four has actually taken off. You know, it's it's not mainstream, but it's very close to mainstream. It's I think it's as you know, mainstream as I think we're going to get at least in our our lifetime. That it's on ESPN. It's on CBS yeah. Sports. I mean, ABC, <laughs> NBC. Yeah, it's uh, wild. And we've had a lot of uh, a huge influx of, of people into the sport from a from a racer standpoint to a spectator standpoint. Not everyone necessarily knows the the history. I think you know NASCAR is pretty well documented on you know their early years and and how they got to be uh, where they were to the current France era. And then for for us, you had the the Dave and Jeff period of uh, of the early years to the OG thirteen. I mean, how many people know that there's only twelve, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, they called it the 13, but one guy didn't show, so it's technically 12. <laughs> but it's always going to be the OG 13. So, yeah, just proving out proof of concept. And I owe, I owe so much to, to you and a couple other guys that are going to be on in the next next couple episodes. Actually, just, you know, really kind of rode me for this. I it was I know it was my idea. And, and brainstorming, you know, that, that helps out to talk out loud to somebody else to bounce back and forth, which we've done for months. For, for months and months. And then, um, and then there was the butterflies. I'm not going to lie. I mean, this is putting myself out there. I'm out there in so many other regards, but this is, this is scary. I don't like my voice. I think I'm ugly, you know. You don't. I look at me. <laughs> I mean, you, you make I me look good. I, uh... <laughs> People compliment me a lot, which I appreciate, but I still get nervous every single time I grab a microphone. I, I can't not until I start talking, then I kind of get into my little zen, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it's it's nerve wracking every single time. I will tell you that when I've when, when I've received like text message or something about, hey, I saw this sport on TV, they, they, they'll bring up something like, this guy's walking around with this wrench mic. <laughs> I'm like, that's my friend, man. That That's like, that's one of my boys. You know, I text with him every day. Anyway, yeah, let's let's get let's get this going. Let's get into let's let's get into Miles. Let's get into Miles' head. Let's talk about Miles' history. 
So we won't go into KOH yet. We'll, we'll, we'll get to KOH down the road, maybe, you know, 20 minutes from now. But I'm going to throw it on you. Talk to me about Miles. Talk to me about your hometown. Talk to me about your family. I know you have a wife and two beautiful uh, daughters. Let's hear it. Yeah, so, I mean, like you said, I uh, born and raised in Palo, Kansas, uh, and I was literally born at home. Uh, my mom lived there for 40-plus years, but I was born in their bedroom. How, how, does, uh, that, how some, does that happen? Well, I don't really remember it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that she had some friends and midwives come over, and, I mean, natural birth, heck, I don't know, and it all worked out. And uh, I went to the doctor the next day. I was born uh, April 4th, 83. Uh, the next day uh, they were taking me to the doctor and there's a snowstorm. Um, and yeah, everything, I mean, look at me now. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, almost, almost. I mean, as far as, as, far yeah, as no, anyone so, yeah. else is concerned. So, and you, you have a younger brother, Max, correct? Yep. Yep. He's four years younger than me. Uh, he's one of my best friends. He's my brother, you know, growing up, we battled like brothers. We, you know, hit each other, beat each other up. I usually won. He's now bigger than me, so I now we're just friends. <laughs> but uh, we live. He lives here in Palo too. He moved to the city, Kansas City, just an hour north. He lived there for a few years, went to college. Um, he's got a wife, couple kids. Also, he moved back to Paola, and uh, we've just kept. You know, we're we're still buddies. You know, now, if I need something, I can call him. Vice vice versa. Now, was he also born at home? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Four years later, uh, I kind of remember that, but I definitely fell asleep because it was you know midnight o'clock. I don't remember. But yeah, we were both born and born at home, and everything went as smooth as it could go, I guess. But that's definitely not common anymore. <laughs> but my my parents were. Uh, we're hippies. I mean, just as hippies you could get back in the day when everything was the way it was. And I uh, have a lot of good memories of it. I remember coming to your house, well, your mom's house that's down on the river. And she was, you guys were having, you know, a cookout. I don't remember the situation, but I know my wife was with me. So it couldn't have been too many years ago, 10 years ago, maybe. And uh, it was probably uh, eight years ago. I just had my anniversary and it was probably a wedding reception at mom's for me and Bailey. Was that, was that what was, I couldn't remember if that or if it was like a birthday party for your mom, but I do remember there was a significance around Blue Moon beer, but I don't remember yep, yeah, what the significance so, was. So that was my dad's band. He, uh, he had the Blue Moon band back in the day. He's played uh, blues forever. He's, he passed away roughly 20 years ago now, but growing up he was around. He was great. Awesome. I miss him. But yeah, he played blues. He had, a, he started out with a one man band uh, and grew that into a pretty decent band. They, you know, didn't travel far, but played Kansas City. And so we had his old bandmates come and they played the Blue Moon All-Stars, we call them now. So, uh, and they played there and we drank beer and hoorah. Yeah, I, I feel like it was around, we were talking like craft beer. If you grew up in small town America, craft beer certainly was never something that was uh, on the palate or even in the store. And I come, I think, I feel like it was, it was that, you know, we normally drank, what do we drink? Bush light. Lots of, lots of bush light. I still drink Keystone. <laughs> or, <laughs> that, that's, that's what right. I call my budget beer. I like that, good beer, but budget beer. That's is right. Keystone. But yeah, then we still, you know, cra- craft beer started getting popular. And uh, I remember having that. And I remember being there and you drinking Blue Moon. And you told me that that was, that was your beer and your beer. And it was because of your dad. That's right. Uh, yep. Yep. That's put, it. Put that back, back together. So now you, you end up, you, you're married. Uh, your wife, Bailey, she's related to the rest of the county that you're not related to, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, she's originally amended and there's, uh, whole herd of those guys uh so yeah every time we go to the local walmarts or whatever we bump into somebody so and then Teresa, she's got the failing side it's they've got seven or eight siblings also so there is a lot of relation on her side here in town which is great you know we have a lot of fun everybody hoorahs and all that jazz but we just have my mom and my brother and then my grandma and aunt are up in the city but we don't have much here in town except for us and then you've got two daughters now and remind me their ages i I uh, uh, J- Jade uh, will be uh, seven October tenth, so ten ten. That's my race number. Ella, she will. She just turned uh, four April seventh, so a couple of days after mine. So we almost share birthday parties most years. And uh, yeah, I, I I wanted a boy so bad, and then I had two girls and can't imagine anything else, and don't want anything else, and I'm done. No more kids. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I, I don't know. I, I I don't think I can do it. I I I do have the one boy and. He's a he's a piece of work. He's a he's a handful, but you know I I, I absolutely love him. I, I can't imagine having two daughters. My daughter just rules the house. Uh, she's the boss. She's the absolute boss of everything. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm highly outnumbered. <laughs> now 
you got in you got into off roading much earlier than I did, just because of, you know the environment of where where you're at. The, my first recollection of you, this you know, obviously pre Bailey, pre uh, pre daughters, uh, was you had this uh, this Chevy one ton called the Red Rocket. Yep, yeah. So I'll back up just even a little before that. You know, I I had a three wheeler when I was I'm gonna say 13 probably, and my parents, like I said, were hippies, very green. So to let to have them actually let me get something I wanted was a huge step. So I got a three wheeler. It wrecked it, you know, a million times. Then got a four wheeler, wrecked it about the same. And then, yeah, then got a Samurai, then a Tracker, and then got the Red Rocket. So all those were just, just wreck wheeling, whatever. But the first real kind of rock crawler was just a, a pretty sweet farm truck that was four wheel drive that I, I bought it and it was great. Uh, and then took it off road just a couple times and, uh, Dent it up every. It was pretty straight. It was clean. So dent it up every quarter panel and door and whatnot, and then uh, turned into a rock crawler pretty quick because it was pretty rough after a couple weekends. But but you and, you built your wrenching skill set though at that point though, right? I mean, you, yeah, yeah, you're, you're uh, hard so, into it. Yeah, so I, uh, I I'll even ramble a little more. I I went to Johnson County Community College to get my associates in automotive. Always been a gearhead, and that's right when I bought that truck. So uh, yeah, I've always been a gearhead, like wrenching. So once I started dinging it up, I had a a, a couple good buddies. Uh, you know, we have a pretty good off road family here in Paola. So they, you know, I, I dinged it up, I whatever. They helped me fix it. So you know, it started out three quarter ton, broke that too many times. Stepped up to one ton, then back halved it, and just you know, just the evolution of. Just a farm truck into a wreck wheeler into a it was it was a lot of fun, and that was that was pretty standard at least in my recollection of the that, that two thousand one two three two thousand four two thousand five kind of window. I think that was probably about oh six when Red Rocket died. When did it die? That's probably about then because yeah, I mean buggies weren't real popular back then. It was the Truggy oh. or whatever. That was uh, and taking a farm truck with a Dana sixty and or it had a forty four and you found a sixty. And we used to go mudding back in the day because all we had was creeks, and that was the blast until now. It's like, that was pretty stupid. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's but the, we the just didn't have availability and, you know, budget. You know, I was a broke broke college kid that could barely afford gas and beer and building a truck on the side, and then everything evolves. I think that's the transition that we, we still see today. We see guys that, uh, you know, they end up with the stock Jeep, and then it goes to 31s, then 33s, then 35s, and then they're... They're still daily driving it while they're working on it. I, I absolutely l- love those guys. And I love the stuff that's going out there. I love to see them, their evolution of uh, dementia. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, I do uh, the same thing still. Head, right? You're like, oh, man. Yeah, you know, I, I totally skipped that. I went no, I remember I, you taking your farm truck through through uh, the drive pin. Yeah. And you that, probably know you had it. But. Well, I mean, that, that thing had rotted in a, a hedgerow for how many years? It had, I mean, the, the carburetor. <laughs> barely ran it was like okay what we're gonna go mud tonight what's it gonna be in and i had to go i had to i had to figure it out i was like i'm not gonna go solo <laughs> i'm not gonna go you know, drive a nice a nice truck over there because i'll be stupid i'll do something stupid and tear it up and then so you, you didn't want to take anything great over there yeah that's <laughs> that, is awesome. that, that is awesome but you know i ultimately skipped that little modify and move and take it from 31s to 35s that evolution i actually just kind of jumped that week you went and got a real job and moved to Texas and yada yada. So, and then Mr. Mike Coville entered my life yep. with a uh, with a uh, a buggy. A, I don't know what he what you'd even call it a twisted custom knockoff buggy. That was what two thousand seven. Super short wheelbase. But oh man, that uh, was, it, it was fun. <laughs> stu- I think it was stupider than I am. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it was it, it was fun though, but yeah. So so you you killed the rocket somewhere in there. You started getting into razors. Tell- uh, a few of my buddies had had them, uh, and I was you know debating on getting like the Kawasaki had a T Rex back in the day, and then a few buddies had these these uh, Razor eight hundreds, and I you know dove head first and went and got had my mom co-sign. Went and got a loan on a brand new eight hundred, and I was. Not the first one in Paola, but the first one in my immediate circle to get one, and uh, it blew up pretty quick. Not the not the razor, but lots of people started getting them because they were. You could go get a loan, and go. I mean, those things for what they were were awesome. You could take them anywhere. And then now looking back, they hundreds are pretty junk. We 
broke them just like everything else and worked on them all the time. But, you know, the evolution of, you know, went from 800 to 900 to now, you know, 1,000, then turbo, and just the, the steps keep getting higher. But, yeah, started with the 800, just, just wreck wheeling, and just, you know, we have creeks around here, so you go to the bottom and make it to the top, you know, hill shooting, whatever. And that was, I mean, we just, you know, drink beer in the creek, go take the razor out. We get the more the merrier, start a bum fire. And we did that for a couple of years, had a lot of fun. Uh, did a bunch of gravel cruising and whatnot. Now, somewhere in there, you uh, you actually did get a Jeep. You, like, you had a road Jeep, right? That was later on. That was years later. Okay. Uh, I uh, progressed from an 800 to the 900s came out. My buddy went and bought a wrecked one. And, man, I had to have it. And he ended up finding another deal, so I ended up buying his and wreck wheeled it for a, probably about a year and then the utv racing came through and that's when i started racing utvs and our first one was really low-key there's 10 of us probably and our immediate group was the main group of racers and ended up doing very well until i didn't just the way it goes racing hit a tree whatever but i was you know first or second and i realized like man this is a lot of fun and i'm pretty good at this so you know whatever so that evolved into getting a little more serious and built a 900 race machine and had my daughter uh, October 10th. That was Jade. And so that was my race number, 1010. And uh, had a uh, even upgraded from the first 900 to another 900 that was nicer and newer with power steering. So that's when I got a little more serious and raced two or three years in that machine and did very, very well. I mean, I got, you know, I, I got hooked, but got the bug. Well, and all the videos I saw of you, the 800 era, uh, maybe even in the 900 era, man, you're fast. You were, you're, yeah, I you're, mean, you're a wheel man. I, I like very good talking wheel, good, but yeah, I, I, I can I can ride a razor. I, I can drive it with the best of my feel if I had a little more budget and a little more whatever. But for what I had, I made it work, and I I, I won a lot of races. I had a lot of bad luck. I rolled more than once, but uh, I thoroughly enjoy the racing part. Let's see, when did I get the Jeep? I think I got the Jeep five years ago, so that was 14. So I was, we were well into the KOH reason when I got my Jeep, but I got a, a wrecked jk an 11 model and uh, started building it mildly just 35s fenders bumpers yada yada and took the family to colorado and now i can't go a year without going to colorado and i call it leaf looking because i definitely use four-wheel drive but i don't try yeah, to the girls like it beat on the cheap but and family like it and yeah bailey my wife and the girls they love it we just get out on the trail we you know cook hot dogs next to a creek for lunch we throw rocks in the river until they're tired, and then we take off in the trail. Usually they both fall asleep for in and out, off and on. You've been on a, at least one or two of those Jeep trips. and Oh, I've only, been invited, of, I've only been invited once. And you weren't even invited that time. You just invited yourself. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you live in Texas, so, yeah, whatever. But, yeah, the, you know, I, I no, find we, myself the, a family man. I, I Once I finally had kids i that settled me down a lot we used to party pretty hard we still do every once in a while we've, had some, uh, we've but made the some kids, amazing memories man we've had yeah, some the kids, amazing memories all over the country with our families yeah the kids are a lot of fun that's really you know i, I family first is i i really try to make that a real thing so yeah the jeep is a, a perfect way to to do that you can get out in the woods i mean we take it just four minutes down the road to my buddy's farm and drop in the creek, and we can grill hot dogs and throw rocks and then crawl right back out and drive to town. It's, uh, it's just a really good platform to get out in the woods with family. I, I love it. One, one of my favorite and, and prized pictures that I have, it's actually of you. It's you and three boys, you know, all pale of boys. One, well, one of the boys being my son. Uh, there's four of you, and you're on a mountain bike. Oh, right, that's in Crested, Crested Butte. Right around picture. Crested Butte, Colorado, yep. and just... You were being, you're just being miles. You're, you're climbing kid up, yeah. a kid at heart, and you got three other boys that are just being kid at hearts too. And they're all, you guys are all piled, like piled <laughs> on this bicycle. And, and we'll erect like puffing it around on like the main street at Crested Butte. Our wives are just like, all right, let's find an, find another uh, bar and feed them more beers because this is this party is this party is not ending. Yeah, and then you you guys just you guys just got back from Colorado, right? You just went, went yeah. back up. Yeah, so this year's been busy, so I'll, I'll skip. Last year, I was really busy with the KOH announcing, which I loved it. And this year, we've stepped back from that. Uh, so I've had a lot more free time on my hands, so we've been traveling a lot more. We went to, to Colorado just now uh, three weeks ago, spent a, a long five-day, uh, went camping and jeeping, like I said, you know, legit tent camping. And actually, the, 
uh, Darren and Darlene Hinky, uh, they were in the similar area. They bumped into us and they uh, went camping with us too and went wheeling up in there. Uh, so we did that for five days, traveled home, was home for a couple days and had to go to Minnesota for a family reunion. Uh, so did that over the weekend. And my grandpa is uh, almost 95 and we were able to get ev- almost every single cousin and and grandson and great grandson and daughter and all that together and had a, a really cool kind of birthday party for my grandpa uh, Grandpa Hasselquist, you know, ni- almost 95 and just he's what you hope to be when you're that old. So that was really cool. I mean, how cool is that, though, to be 500, 500, 600 miles from home in Colorado and run into Darren and Darlene? I mean, we absolutely lo- lo- love them. They're quintessential racers, quintessential racing family. And then wherever you go in the country, you can, run, you, you can, you know, especially with social media, you can see where people yes, are today. So it's almost, it's almost became too much. So social media, obviously I'm a geek for it, whatever, you know, Facebook, Instagram. So I'll be like, Hey, I can't wait to get to the mountains next week. And then I'll get a bunch of PMs, DMs, whatever, like, Hey, where are you headed? And I'm like, Oh boy, I can't have a party at a little bitty campground, but they were literally camping in the same town. So we, we PM back and forth and, and the Hinkies were legit friends just from racing. And then they ended up like my wife, uh, Jay, uh, Bailey and, and Darlene, like literally hit it off. So now we're legit friends. Uh, it'll be nice to hopefully she can tag along to some of these races and hang out with them while I'm busy doing what I do. And uh, yeah, you, I can, you also, but we can go almost anywhere now and know somebody through racing, through social media, through the Ultra 4 family. It's, oh, yeah, it's really cool. We choose a destination to go on vacation by who we can hang out with. <laughs> yeah, or who's, right. whose couch you can crash on. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, no, absolutely. absolutely. So 2008, you uh, flash back to bring ourselves So let me today. actually, like, reflash you back before we go into racing. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so next month, August, we'll make my 13th year working for AAA. Uh, so I get that question all the time is, how are you able to – to have a real job and travel as much as you do. Well, I work 12 to 14 hour shifts most of the time. Uh, so I, I work a two week, it's a two week schedule and it's, I work two days on, sorry, sorry, three days on, two days off, four days on, five days off. So that's a, a two week consistent schedule. So I work every other weekend, but then every other weekend I have five days off. And Which, you do some shift swapping with some guys, too. To, to, I, I to used to, them. but not anymore. I, I've worked there, like I said, 13 years. So now I've get, I, I have almost four weeks of vacation a year. So every the weekend's a, a five-day weekend, so I can work around that fairly easy. And then if something happens on a weekend, I can just take a weekend off and, and make it work. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, I, I do not drive a tow truck. I drive a light service truck for AAA. Uh, <laughs> so I, our main deal is, uh, we, we show up to you, your battery's dead. I come to jumpstart you. But while I do that, I test your battery and let you know, Hey, your battery's fine. Just charge it up. You'll be good. Or you have a bad battery. I've got a battery on my truck. I can install right now. 15 minutes. You're on the road. So our big deal is, uh, del- deliver and install batteries on the road. Um, so I do quick and easy stuff. I change your tire. I unlock your car, which I've unlocked your truck before at a race. Yeah, uh, I've done the Shirley's a couple times, at least once. But anyway, so yeah, I do unlocks. I deliver gas. I do the quick and easy stuff. And then if I can't do it, then I call the tow truck and and that's just kind of what we do. So you know, you're you're a great guy to have around. I mean, there was many years that I remember you would not travel without your break-in bag. What was that year? It's just a it's a just a lockout yeah. lockout bag. So oh, it's yeah. a simple kit that it's not hard, but just like anything else, if you don't know what you're doing, it's hard. So practice makes perfect. I really enjoy what I do. Uh, when it's cold, it sucks. It's cold. If it's snowing, it's cold. If it's raining, it's wet. But I'm going to say 80% of the time, the weather's decent, and I really enjoy not being stuck in an office and do that. So uh, it's a, a perfect fit for my family. Uh, ba- when Bailey and I got together, I was already working there, so she doesn't know any better. And I just work every other weekend unless I take vacation. So it's just a perfect fit for me to allow to come to all these races and or my friends give me a lot of a well, I crap because you. I'm a professional vacationer, they say. But you you, uh, kept, you kept me honest on this interview because I had actually jumped forward. So I'm glad glad you brought that back. That is a big question. People uh, are always asking me, 
hey, what does that guy do? How does that guy race so much? Or how does that, who, who are his mechanics? Or how does he, how does he have time to prep, build? Up? I mean, we can talk about those people, you know, down the road or offline or whatever. But just like what you're saying, I have that question too. So when I'm bounced around the pits, I, I ask him. And most of the racers, you know, either have a, a corporate job, which that's not very many of them. A few of them do. Or they own their own business and work a lot to be able to go racing with their friends and have fun. So um, it, it, later on the season, like you're saying, we'll get those people on and uh, and let them tell their own story. I don't want to wrap them out or put words in their mouth. But most of them, I mean, racing is not cheap, you know, from a personal expense. Oh, yeah. And I, I race on a minuscule size and I can't afford it. But it's fun and it's a drug, so it'll be Absolutely. fun to, to and you, get and you're all the stories. Not not just yeah. I think you're blessed with a really a really good job that you've uh, hung with so for so long. I think that's really hard. You just don't you you don't tend to find those companies today that allow for 10, 13, 15, 17, 20 year retirement work schedules a regular occurrence with people now you, you just don't hear about it. It's like everyone works somewhere two years, then two years, then two years. Yep, and, exactly. And, and I, I really like what I do, but you always have to have your eyes open, your ears open to see if something is better available, but I don't plan on going anywhere unless something falls in my lap. I, uh, you all, like I said, you're, you're stupid if you don't keep your options open, but I do like what I do and I don't plan on going anywhere unless something really cool happens that is a good fit. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, you're very blessed with a wife that lets you get away with that. I mean, I, I don't uh, know if I'm lucky or if she's lucky, but you know. Well, I, I, I know what you'll say that, that you're, that, you know, that she's the lucky one. I, I get that. Oh, I, I'll For say sure, that. Just because I know, I, I know you and I know her yeah. um, over the years. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I'll tell you, you're, you're lucky. A lot of guys, you know, uh, that that's actually a point of contention on timing and and that. And uh, Bailey is very, very supportive. I don't think it doesn't feel like she was in the early years of you going to KOH. Like it was kind of like she but, wasn't a huge fan of it because I wasted when I first started. I only had a week of vacation, so I'd waste my week of vacation to go pit crew for you, and uh, then we'd only be able to do stuff every other weekend because I couldn't take off the other weekend. But so she wasn't a huge fan at first, but she eased in and she's been a, a huge help but on a nut on a side note she's on a plane right now heading to florida while i've got all the kids all weekend which i love doing that i'm not complaining at all but it's a give and take i take a lot more but <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. You, you know i mean if yeah, you're married right. it's it's a constant balance so in 2008 there's a fella he's he's from spring hill kansas uh and we'll talk talking about paul Beatty. And he lived in. He's from Spring Hill, but moved to Paola, and we became buddies. That's right. That's right. He he did live in Paola. Yeah. And then he moved to Alabama. I don't remember what, when did he move to Alabama. Oh five, oh four. I'm gonna say five or six, probably somewhere in there. And then showing up in 2007, uh, I was myself. I was making enough money in in the world that I was able to go. I met Mike Coville, bought a buggy off of him. Reds were the ticket. Thirty nine inch Reds. Everyone wanted stickies. You had to have stickies, and the only way to get stickies then was. Either pay an exorbitant amount be on, or... Or be on the racer program. Or be on the racer program. I was like, ah, man, this racer program, let's go. Entered entered XRA that year. And that would have been 08, yeah, early 08. It was 2008, and the first race was in uh, Mount Olive, uh, Alabama. Mount, uh, Gray Rock, Alabama. Gray Rock. Yeah, Mount Olive, but Gray Rock yeah, was, Gray Rock, was Alabama. off road park. It's changed a lot since then, but oh, yeah. that was what, cool. What was it? it was park. mining, yep. like strip pit mining or coal mining or lignite mining, something like that. And so we, we all show up there. Coal mining, yep. Did we, we showed up early to that race, like maybe a handful of days early to help Paul Bates. Oh, to help Paul finish, finish the buggy because I was his co co driver for that race. That's right. And you rode and down was, with, uh, uh did you, you rode down with Kelly Kaiser and maybe some other guys from, from Bones Kansas. met us there for sure. Yeah, Chris Zubak, he, he came. That was a, that was fun. So, so meeting guys like, you know, Brian and Levi Shirley, by the way, that was my first race. That was also Levi's first race. And we all know who Levi Shirley is. Today. And I remember he was yeah. like 13 or 14 that year <laughs> in <laughs> a single season. He yeah. was nine. He was nine. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> he was young. Uh, no. Uh, what was Levi? 17 going on 18 because I think he turned 18 the next year. I thought he was. Yeah, yeah, he was a young young pup. He was young and he wrecked. Oh man, he wrecked. Like that like Gray Rock was amazing, but he wrecked so bad. Ripped the ice. And we off had my, and we had the new car blues on. Yeah. And then, Paul, and then I was riding Paul with him and we had the new, the new car blues. Kept blowing fuses. You guys And then we fire, rolled, though. yeah, upside down on fire and we were 
what what was it? It would have been driver passenger down, and I beat him out of the buggy. We all I heard was fire, and I got out. I kicked him in the face, helmet on, couldn't see. You know, Ricky Bobby style on fire, but and then we saw like Kim Sears. I mean, at yep. that, at that Kim time, and Droopy. Fam- she was famous. You know, she was really you know, a woman driving this, br- you know, baby blue, beautiful Jimmy's Jimmy's chassis. Yep, yep. They they pitted next to us, and so we got to meet her, and it was just I, I was in awe of, of Kim and what Kim was able to accomplish. You know, back in the day. And, and she was probably a better driver than you. Oh, probably still today. I have no doubt about that. But she did. First run, first heat, she rolled it over backwards. Straight up, straight all the way over backwards. Just tumped. And she landed on all fours and then stayed in it. I was like, oh my God, what is this? Whoa. You just didn't expect that. So Yeah, because uh, yeah, this- when we roll, the first thing is grab the key, shut it off, because you don't want to lose oil pressure, blow up the motor. But yeah, she was just all over the throttle, turning drive. That was my first experience of like, oh boy, this, <laughs> you get this, rowdy. This is something else. After that race, you know, I, it turned out, I mean, it was the most expensive pair of red label tires I've ever bought because let's, uh, we liked let's, it. Who else was there? Uh, Stan Brannick and their whole crew. Uh, Derek yeah. West was there. And, and then uh, you got Rusty Bray. Rusty, yeah, Rusty Bray. He was kind of, he. him and Derek battled for the lead most of the time. In which the, the, this, uh, is, this is a good Mercer. segue to, uh, uh, you know, Ken Mercer was there, but Ken, Ken had that single seater and he was being he had uh he was splitting was seat time with uh, Mr. rob, rob Ender Ender park. park yep and, and so we've been buddies with him since the the og days that, well that was our first year meeting him but uh, og outside of california days i think yeah 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 <laughs> yeah to, to not not to jump out of i mean 2008 was probably i mean in my opinion the best the, year the, ever the best year, we always say that yeah year ever it, i mean it truly was in a lot of regards it was the KOH hadn't really happened yet. I mean, there had been the, that year was the first year where they had the OG 13, the OG 12 was in uh, February 07. of 07. And then, and, in, then t- and then 2008, they had had, it, what, it was about, a little bit bigger, but was I'd like never heard of it. 35 or 45 guys showed up for that. Yeah. That really, it was, XRA yeah. was just like, whoa, what is this? Go fast. What is, I mean, we were just doing these little short course stuff. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun. We were, you know, tearing our stuff up. It, yeah. So then people. I ended up pick crewing for you. And I, cause that's right. We, our Paul and I's budget weren't good enough to race. And we realized that pretty quick. We had a lot of fun, but realized we were outgunned financially and everything else. So you called me. He's like, hey, just keep coming to the races and being pit crew. I'm like, that's my style. So I was able to work around it and, uh, you know, I was your best crew crew member you ever had. But um, this is then, true. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> so yeah, so our our we had three or four buddies from uh, Pale that would come to most races, and uh, and we we raced the entire season of XRA. And then I was actually on a dinner date with Bailey, and you had called me. He's like, "Hey, we're going to King of Hammers in California in February." I'm like, "I've barely left the." Uh, this, you know, the immediate three or four state area. I'm like, California, like, okay, buddy. Yeah, right. And then you got pretty serious about it, put that pack together, and we got accepted. And I was like, oh, boy, well, Bailey, I'm going to California in February. Well, and, I, uh, you know, to, to back, back up to Bender Park on, you know, Rob, Rob Bender Park on this, Bender, uh, Bender oh, Pass for us. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> Right, so he yeah, talks, so, Cause, so cause Dave, him and Dave are buddies. That's right. So Dave and ten Jeff vendors are sitting in California and going through who's gonna, who are they gonna invite that next year? It, it wasn't to qualifying yet, and Dave, you know, talks to Bender. Hey, who do you know these XRA guys? And well, there we were, and he calls me. And, says, and XRA wasn't huge, so basically everybody that was racing there got invited almost because JT Taylor was even racing back in those days. <laughs> JT raced. Uh, well, JT was OG. But, oh, he was OG also. Uh, he was OG also, but yeah, he, used but to, he was racing XRA. And, and I know he owns cars today. I, I and, know and name drops more Shannon Campbell. Yeah. Oh. He was probably the biggest name in the sport. Shannon was, Shannon was, dream, Shannon's still dreamy, but Shannon was very dreamy back then. Uh, such, such a good dude. Uh, so yeah, but it's, man. XRA. It's crazy how it's uh, how it's game. You know, it went from basically moon buggies that were going fast to current time. Now it's a desert buggy that can rock crawl. Kind of if you want to, however you want to word that. But no, uh, you, the evolution of the sport is tremendous. I think you worded it perfectly. Yeah, somewhere in there, what Shannon Shannon loaned a, his a, a moon buggy to race to Levi Shirley in, in, in that year, two thousand eight. 
Levi was Le, Levi knocked up a, a win in XRA using Shannon Campbell's car. Shannon Campbell loans a yeah because he couldn't make the race or something. Yeah, and, and Levi had wadded up his car and that was in Badlands when he borrowed that and won. I think it was Hannibal. I feel like uh, you you are correct. You are correct. I, I, it was I Hannibal. Feel like it was Hannibal. Yep. And then after that, you know, so we went to KOH in two thousand nine. Outside of that, you know. You and I racing together, we, we I kind of more or less, you know, stepped away. I had some kids. I got back in at some point, but we raced the Mint together. Yeah, a couple yeah. Times you and, you invited me to be a co-driver uh, for the Mint, and uh, I was like, it was more. I, I invited you to be like a gas carrying guy, and like, and then you said bring the helmet. Well, that's because you were going to be I didn't have refueling. So you're going to be refueling. That was it. Was all about safety. It was all about safety. But then uh, our good friend Rick Mooneyham, who does who did co-drive for oh. me in that era. Rick hurt his back. Um, that put you in the car. I have a little animosity toward you. And you this. or I didn't know how good of a co-driver I was actually going to be uh, because I'd never done it. You are a very and good driver. I just you're a good driver. Yeah, you're. Good I can driver. drive. So yeah. So you we're going to the Mint in Vegas. How four wheel drives Vegas? I'm in. Yeah. You know, so I was pumped. So we get there. And we do tech and contingency. Actually, no, we get there and we had to do shock tuning with uh, uh, with Israelson. Yeah, Wayne Israelson. Yeah, with Wayne. Yep. And uh, that was my first experience with a real desert car of like, oh my goodness. So I hop in the car and we're bombing across, and all of a sudden I'm like, we're, I'm used to a UTV. I was like, we are going to wad it up. And all of a sudden I see tires do, whoo, pass the hood, pass the hood. I was like, you didn't feel that. Those are the ones where you barrel roll. <laughs> so we start tuning. It's like, this is pretty cool. And I was like, shoot, this co-driving stuff's easy. And then a GPS, what's that thing? And then you're like, uh-oh. I was like, it just has an arrow going that way, right? And that's when we realized this is going to be interesting because I can grab a wheel and, and read the terrain. So the, the, the computer to, to dive into that though, that, that just is full proof that you you are a very you're a very good driver. I'm, I'll, I'll put that back on you that you're a very good driver. But when you you had to make that shift to the right seat under you know very short terms with little direction, man, we had problems, didn't we? And I I honestly just assumed like uh, driving is easy to me. So co-driving's got to be easier. Oh no, uh, co-driving. There's a lot, 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 lot more going on than I thought. The GPS, I just assumed you'd, they would just say turn left, turn right. Well, no, there's. I didn't know how to zoom in. I didn't know how to how to back it up, and we didn't realize that until we were on the start line. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, we, yeah. So anyways, we'll back up to tech and contingency. It's basically a car show on the on the down, you know, the old downtown Fremont Street, which was cool. I ended up getting to drive it. That was oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, bucket yeah, yeah, list yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah, and so we, we went through with the Campbells. Uh, the Campbell. Yep, Camp, yep. We, Campbell yeah, I nerfed I nerfed Shannon a couple times just because I could because it so, wasn't my car team, or uh, Nitto teammates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nitto teammates. Uh, so yeah, tech and contingency that was just crazy cool. You know, if you're an off road fan, which still I'm still just a fanboy, and tech and contingency is one of my favorite parts of race week now. And to be in Vegas doing that, that was that was cool. Yeah, what the Martelli brothers have done bringing Mint back to Vegas and reviving that race itself, everything they built around it, it is – and to see it happen kind of not, – not necessarily the coattails of KOH, but, you know, maybe like a one-year to two-year lag behind KOH and KOH blowing up. It's – I mean, we're, we're living in some amazing times to see Offroad do what it's done. I mean, that 10 years – Yeah, the Martelli Ryan brothers, Cox, have, like you now, said, are doing amazing with it. It's cool. And, and Dave Cole with – King of the Hammers is building, they're building brands. And right now with social media, the way it is, it's easier to get it out there compared to in 08, 09, there was pirate. I had a login. I couldn't remember my password most of the time. So I just, whatever you guys were telling me, I did. Uh, but now who doesn't have Facebook, who doesn't have Instagram that you're not sharing to, you can do Facebook live. Like it's, we're in a cool time that stuff goes viral and it's uh it, it, it's interesting and so to get to viral though it takes the media and and dave and jeff Noll initially they came out they were gonna this it was a media company that hosted hammer king productions that hosted a race right that's that's initially what what happened and then what was it about 2012 dave kind of put out the uh the feelers for looking for uh I don't it, remind me. It was it a. I feel like it was a contest, but I know I threw your name in on it. Like I do remember well, let's, that. Let's let's finish the mint. 
So oh no no you, no you you, you and you and Rick replaced like, like <laughs> you and you and Rick qualified very okay for being rookies in an all wheel drive you know ultra like four rig. We the, I feel like we were the first car off the line that didn't have a support helicopter. Yeah, yeah, we were way up front. <laughs> so we're sitting in the car, and I've got, like, the worst butterflies I've ever had because we're sitting – I see Robbie Gordon. I see Rob McCachron. Like, we're – I can – they're ahead of us, but they're not far. And uh, the, the, the Miss Mint is sitting right in front of us waving the flag, and I'm just like, this is the coolest, craziest thing ever. And they dropped the flag, and we both are like, oh, we were supposed to go. So we jumped in late. And we're following. I don't remember who it was, but uh, CJ uh, Hutchins that year. Yep, yep, Hutchins. Yeah, yeah, yep. So good, we do the uh, the infield, and I forget about the GPS thingy. I'm following. I'm again on the right side, but still in the driver's mindset. So I'm watching the lines, and all of a sudden, uh, we were supposed to turn and just blew a berm and should have barrel rolled, didn't. And that was that was, that, that was, that was my head. driving. That was my oh, driving. Though. That, 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 yeah, but, no, no, not in the blowing the turn, but the same. Uh, but that was the. Uh, that's the infamous, uh, my bad. <laughs> Cause, uh, yeah, yeah, you said yeah. a lot. I think I was ready to kill yeah. you by the, by the end of that. But no, yeah, we, uh, we went off a berm at one point and, uh, and landed so hard. I, I shattered a tooth <laughs> and, and then when I got back to Houston, they glued it to get, they super glued, whatever they, whatever the, the dentist does, they like super glued it together and nursed that thing, you know, a couple years. And then, yeah, just, you know, right after, uh, what was it? Memorial day. Yeah. Memorial day. Right after Memorial day, I finally got the, the permanent, Fake, fake. Art, like artificial limb. You know my process, my prosthetic. prosthetic. And, I got a prosthetic and, what, and what'd you call that tooth? Yeah, fucking miles. No, uh, <laughs> they said my bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that tooth is named my bad. Uh, so anyway, so so the race we were having overheating issues and whatever. But the the highlight of that race was just doing the race course because we were. We were nursing it to a point, but just to see the race course was pretty cool. And then we got on the lake bed, and you get some open air, so we like we hammered it pretty good. We were over a hundred, and all of a sudden, a trophy truck blew by us within ten feet. Doing we were doing a hundred, and they were doing one thirty plus, and that scared me so bad. I realized, yeah, this, graph, yeah, yeah, this is a different ball game because we started too far up for what our. Yeah, we're in a good qualifying. You know that car. That you know we're talking about the unicorn for any anyone any questions. Uh, it was a IFS. You know, a solid rear axle, rear engine. It was probably one of the one of the first or early early uh, Ultra Four. Um, IFS forty four hundred class yeah. class one. It was one of the early class ones. That was you know certainly you know that close to eight hundred number. And I I I don't think a lot of people had broached seven hundred horsepower at that point. And we came out of the gate with that. And thank you to you know Dave Schneider. I toss out to that guy, uh, Dave. Dave. It was it was actually that, that that car was his idea. He he designed it. He started it. And then I ended up picking up the reins and moving. And you and Rick bit. finished and then, it. And then yeah, Rick Mooneyham, Trick Toy Fab. Like Havasu City, Arizona, amazing, amazing, amazing guy. I mean, a great guy to have in your corner. And he can drive too. Uh, oh, <laughs> reminds me a lot of myself. <laughs> yeah, you taught him everything he knows. That's I've heard. I've heard but, you tell so, him that. So, then, <laughs> so then this we is go the to son him. of the great Gene Mooneyham as well. Old man Gene. Yep. Uh, so yeah, we I'd only heard the name before, and then we go to his shop to work on your car before Parker four twenty five or something, and uh, I was a little nervous to meet him. And she'd be instant best friends and. Yeah, Rick's awesome. That was that was a that was a fun year or two of uh, yeah uh, that, that kind of racing. It, it was good. It was good. I'm 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 glad to be. I'm out glad you're paying for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I know. Right. I, I had a good time paying for it. It was it was it was good. Times. Remember, I, I work for AAA, and I always tell everybody I'm comfortably broke. <laughs> when we finally called it, we passed some trophy trucks in that race. We passed a ton of 6100s. It, it, it was a good time. But we uh, when we finally called it, we pulled into a pit. We didn't know it at the time, but it was the carrier bearing, right? Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, we blew something up. I was nervous that whatever it was was going to hit me in the leg or the butt. <laughs> it, it, that, well, it was rattling. That seat used to mount to the carrier bearing. So I, I, I was, once we figured out how broke it was, I was like, how did Miles not like feel that in his butt? <laughs> It, your, your seat had to have been like jumping up and down. I don't know. Oh yeah, no, it was. It was I'm glad we quit. <laughs> yeah, we had some good, good. That was that was a good race. Man, that's some good memories. Uh, you're killing me. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of all over the place. My bad, but it's nah, funny, it's, it's all right. Uh, we'll, we'll 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 draw it back and we'll jump. We're gonna jump back in time. We're gonna go back to so 2009. 
We went to King of the Hammers. You actually, you know, you, you went out there with uh, with me. I'm so glad you did. You actually came down to Houston and helped prep the car a little bit. Twice, yeah. yeah which is a 12-hour drive each way. Well, you, you, know, you flew me and Kelly down for one weekend, and we worked on it for a while and got it pretty good, but we couldn't – remember, we had a oil pressure issue or something – so we kind of whatever, and then the next weekend, Bailey and I drove down over. We our Valentine's Day was with you eating pizza because we were working on the race car, and we ended up realizing we plumbed the uh, oil filter backwards, yeah. <laughs> and that was our oil pressure issue. <laughs> not we, you, but we we, we figured it maybe. out. Maybe I, I don't know that it was me. I'm I'm not I'm not owning that still. You know, uh, ten years later. So so we went to KOH in 2009. Then we all went back in 2010, but we d- didn't race. Yeah, oh nine, right? Uh-huh. Ah. Oh, boom. So we go back 2010, 2011, and then 2012 was coming up, and Dave put out the call for pit, pit announcer. Pit announcers, because Dave started to build the media brand. We were that, that was the first year of a live show uh, because it was up until so eight, nine, ten, eleven was all ran by you know Pirate Lance and and uh, Camo and Nolan and those guys just ran the Pirate Tent or Van whatever. So 12 was the first legit year of a live show. You, I, I didn't even know about it. You were on Pirate and said he was looking for it. And, you know, not the pretty face, but uh, I'm not scared to talk to anybody. <laughs> and I jo- know just enough about automotive and blah, 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 to be able to dumb it down to talk to people. And uh, you threw my name in the hat, and there was only three people that got their ne- So we had to make some stupid video. Uh, me and my buddy Travis, 42 Copperhead. Uh, made a video and it was really corny, but it it, it worked, but it didn't because everybody won. So all three of us went out as pit announcers, or however you want to work that. And and now today, here we are, you know, uh, eight years later, nine years later, you're the, that guy. Now you're kind of uh, you're the voice. You yeah, which is you floated very to the top, the- yeah, very cool, but still kind of dumbfounding all at the same time. But yeah, so. 12, I won it. You know, I didn't win it, but got by default. And then 13, I just called Dave and said, hey, I had a lot of fun. Can I come back? And he's like, well, yeah. And then the next year, they called me. I didn't even have to call them. So I did like, you know, my little, my little happy dance because it's, you know, <laughs> a pay, you know it, I got paid, but it, all it did was cover beer and fuel to get there. And then I slept on couches and bummed on, you know, other people's RVs and and then uh, just kept getting invited back, and then I end up kind of landing a pretty good role in the pits, which I love being in the action. So it was just a perfect fit because I, I'm not one to just like sit here. I'm I'm kind of antsy. That's why I don't work in an office. So I like running around and uh, diving under the car, and then uh, the producers or you know whatever the camera guys they loved it. You know my, uh, you know so it, it was a good fit. So I landed that pretty solid for a few years, and then. Eased my way onto like the stage, being a backup. Uh, got to meet some heroes. You know, Ricky Johnson. I've announced with Ricky Johnson. How cool He's is that? Guy. And now, and now, uh, Cameron Steele's one of the main announcers. And then this year, so in '19, uh, we had our little pre-meeting, and uh, I was a key host with Cameron Steele and Jim Marsden and Scott Rain and those guys. And that was just like, I'm trying not to get a big head, but I'm still just a complete average Joe that works 40, 50 hours a week, but is sitting next to Cameron Steele on stage announcing Ultra 4. And it's just like, it's hard to soak in. And people that don't know me don't know better. But people that know me, I, I, I really try not to get excited and brag, but it's like I'm giddy as a schoolgirl. And I, I you've, totally ascended, you've totally ascended and your, yeah. pers- your personality backs that up. Or, or I've been somewhere else and you've screenshot and sent me a picture of, uh, of something that, that, that Ricky Johnson sent you. Like, it's like miles, uh, he, he's, uh, he, he's made it, man. He's, he's, he's done a good job. And, and for me, watching you do that is, and it's your, and, and it's your, you're to blame, you're to think, however, cause I didn't even, I wasn't on pirate. I had but, a screen but you can, you can say that. I think you can say that, but you need you need to own this. I'd tell anyone to own this. A lot of people in life will open doors for other people and, and or get your foot in the door. I'm going to tell you, sure, yeah, I threw your name in the hat you know, a decade ago, but dude, you you've gone through, you do your homework, you do your research, you know who you're talking about, you know who you're talking to, you know your audience. Hell, I think I saw a, a, a video or maybe it was just a picture of you underneath the car. They were doing a transmission swap, and I feel like you were feeding the driver. <laughs> 
a protein bar or something? <laughs> that that, that was a Justin Reese at Ridgecrest underneath the Toyota, and he broke. I'm not a Toyota guy, but some main bar thing that, like a torsion bar or something. So. I, it looked like I was feeding him, but I was actually holding the mic and a wrench. And then the memes a-holes, yeah, made it look like I was feeding him a candy bar. <laughs> it, 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 I, 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 thought, I thought when I saw <laughs> but, that Miles was But it was, uh, yeah, in the heat of the moment, I I just go on autopilot and I, I just get pumped. Uh, and I like I said earlier, I still get nervous and uh, like, man, should I do this every time I get on a microphone or a com- or a, a video camera? But once I go live, I kind of go into a zen. And normally I have my sunglasses on. And that's kind of like if I'm in front of a lot of people, normal I'm outside. But I put my, my shades on and it's kind of my, my buffer to where I don't have to look at them because they can't see me or something. But I just kind of go into an autopilot and I have fun with it. I get nervous until it's go. And then I just snap out and I just... Blah, blah, blah. And it and it works. I don't know how. I can't tell you what because I I don't practice other than when I'm live, except for in like my work truck down the road. I I memorize the sponsors. I memorize you know welcome to the 2019 Nitto blah blah blah. So I talk out loud to myself in the truck. But other than that, I mean the homework I do is uh, is social media. Uh, I get drivers sheets. I get rules and from you know, from Hammer King, but most of my, my homework is social media and in the pits. I bounce around, I I grab a beer, I go BS with you. I've always got a notepad and a piece of paper and I'll write your your name because there's so many new faces, there's so many old faces, new cars, you they sell and buy. So I just, I keep a notepad and I, uh, I write your race number, your name, and then a couple key facts of what I think is cool and what I think I can remember. And then I just flow in and out of there. That way, when I see you wad up, I'd be like, oh, that was 48, blah, blah. Whoever, Cade Rod, he's upside down on fire, and that's a Jimmy's chassis or you know, whatever. <laughs> and, if, um, and if Cade wasn't in a Jimmy's chassis, it'd be a, a, a problem, he, right? Yeah, he better not be. Yeah. <laughs> but I've made uh, – back, you know, back in the day, Shannon Campbell was the biggest name in our sport, and now I consider him a friend, uh, which I consider – I used to have heroes, uh, and and now it's kind of weird transforming your heroes into your friends, I guess, because I'm not starstruck. I'm still starstruck. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and there's stories from that that I'll get my balls busted. But um, now it's instead of walking into the Campbell's tents, the Shirley's tents, whoever's, it's like, hey, buddy, you know, let's – are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Yeah, everybody's kind of – being the voice or the face of Ultra 4 now – it's taken a long way to get there. And now that I'm there, it's more comfortable for you, a, a low level name racer to, Hey, invite me in and get, you know, throw me a beer and let's BS for 20 minutes about, and walk me around the car. I understand what a car is, but show me what you're excited about that you think's in the limelight or that you're doing something different. And tell me if you want to say it online or not, because when I'm live, I'm live. I can't take it back. <laughs> so there's been lots of like, you better not say this. And I'm like, I hope I don't. <laughs> but no promises. No promises. Uh, or, or, you know, j- just simple stuff like, well, um, we're not really proud of this transmission. It's our third backup. We put it in last night. Yes. Till yeah. Morning. And, and back to that, he, those, so. they're really good at, you know, rotating transmissions the night before a race, which lots of people are. But, yeah, these this kind of racing, it's still... There's still a huge learning curve. I mean, it's came so far since so when we started racing in 09, it is it's not the budget friendly guy. I mean, the first year uh, it may have been 09 was it Healy win in 09? Uh, and he was more of a Lauren wreck won reeler. I think Lauren. Won okay, well, I don't remember, but so he when, the first year he won, he was more of a wreck reeler, a wreck wheeler rig that made into a race car and he won and I'd never heard his name before. And now he's, that's all he does is ultra four. He's a nitto, you know, I mean, he's one of the bigger names of the sport and he came from just a wreck wheeling, which basically everybody did, but that car, his car, I think that's his car. He won in, in 2010 will not win today. And, it's just oh no absolutely the budget does, has does grown Daryl tremendous. does Daryl Gray I think Daryl Gray still owns that car or maybe that was the car that went to Mexico no you, exactly that's one of the things I want to highlight here on on this series is we can talk about how the the evolution about building building and how you got in and how you stayed in and how you got to where you are uh, how you ascended to where you got there and 
now we're, we're seeing guys that come in. Some of them, they come up through the UTV ranks. Some came through, you know, some rec wheeling ranks. Some, you know, comp crawling is still, it's Jesse Haynes and like 20 guys, right? And, and that's um, actually coming back pretty I heavy, know, it, which, it, is, it, which is cool. Just, I, I really like seeing the, the Wee Rock and all that and Dirt Riot and, and obviously I'm an Ultra 4 fan, but I really like seeing the different avenues that rock crawling's back. It died off for a while and it's coming back. But, but um, we're seeing some guys that are just, you know, showing up. They're like, man, I, I saw this on CBS Sports. Yeah. I searched around. I found a car available on Facebook or Race Desert. Race or, Desert, yeah. Or I called, you know, I, I called around Money to, to classified. To, yeah. And, and, and they found a car and they uh, they bought it and they showed up and just that simple. That It's just that simple You that you can show up and, and you can get in the lineup with a guy like Lauren or a guy like Shane Shannon or any number, Randy Slauson, or, I mean, there's... Eric Miller. I mean, yeah, the list is too long yeah, to name drop all day. Right. Uh, and hopefully we have all those guys on here the next year or two or three or four. Oh, abs- absolutely. And it's nice to have, uh, you know, most of the guys uh, that are currently racing 4400 have, have their numbers in, in, in the phone that you can actually easily reach out and be like, okay, here's what we're doing. Now you've seen a couple of these. You want to be on? You want to talk about Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, and you have a few lined up, you know, and it's it's, it's a cool thing you got going here. I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it again. Thanks. And uh, oh, yeah, we're, we're gonna ki- we're gonna kill it. It's it's gonna be fun. I, I've committed to ten or twelve shows. Let's do ten or twelve. And, and if it's cool, it's cool. Yep. And then um, see where it's, it's lame. I'm having fun. I mean, this is this is just the. First I mean, we've been talking about since King of the Hammer, so it's cool yeah. to actually yeah. finally. I mean, it's been five months in the works, and and when you first told me about it, I was like, man, I've actually thought of a podcast. But I'm like I said, I'm in my brother's basement. He had to. I'm on his email account because I didn't have a Skype thing and. He had to, he was here until you came on to he's uh, all I did is sit down and I'm in his basement <laughs> but anyway so the podcast it the, the, it's a cool situation and I'm really glad that you once you you mentioned it I'm like man I thought about it I just don't know how to do it so with you yeah, running still, I'm the show not sure I know how to do it um I, <laughs> You you showed up with the you sent me the kit of stuff to do and it's working so yeah uh, I'm glad I'm glad you, Cameron, and I'm also I'm also right. nervous to jump ship to to start something I mean obviously I've been had the same job forever so I don't want to start something new I'm not scared to but I'm scared to and you're not scared to to go out of your elements a little bit and do oh, this totally, so bro totally scared I, I'm worried about what people have to say about it and pick us apart and, or pick the show oh, apart I, or, or talk about you know when when you initially were announcing they're like oh I'd, I'd read online oh, people that hate that guy's voice man that Miles got God I hate that guy talking yeah I'm so like, so we'll back up for that so I get so geeked out when I, I when I'm at a live show I'm doing the live show and I'm in the zen so I don't know and then when I get home or you know, when I'm at the airport or whatever, I, I'll re-listen to myself, and I hate my voice. And some people love it and hate it. It it works, I guess. But even more, more, one of my producers is like, "It's squeaky, quit it." And I'm like, "I can't help it." You know, so <laughs> that's my voice you're talking and then, about. And then and then being on the live show, you're gonna mess up. It's impossible to be perfect. And I and some people will nitpick me apart, and I'm like, and I'll get kind of butt hurt, kind of bummed, and then realize like. Well, you come try it. When you're talking for eight, ten hours in a day, sometimes by myself. Usually, I have help, but sometimes it is by myself. You're gonna ramble about the same stuff. You're gonna say the wrong information. But I, you know, I, I do what I can. I have fun with it, and uh, and apparently, you know, so this is my seventh year being invited back. So, you know, whatever. Uh, and then uh, there's lots of people that only know me from announcing, and that's cool and weird. You know, whatever's working. And then my friends, I mean, some people still half the guys I work with have no clue what I do with my time off. And then some of them are like, man, that's pretty cool. And other people have no clue and whatever. But I, I, like I said, if I wouldn't have fun doing it, I wouldn't be doing it. And thank you to Dave Cole for keeping me on board and Hammer King Productions. I mean, there's uh, so let's let's go behind the scenes a little bit for King of the Hammers. There, I didn't know that's it what I've got you here for. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. So here recently, I didn't realize that Twelve was even their first year doing it. So most of those guys, Dan Campbell Lloyd. So he was the original head honcho boss guy and uh, he used to film for rod hall uh in like bond yeah yeah the yep guy. yep so he that's how he kind of knew off-road and, a little and, bit but he's a rod he's a hall of famer but he passed away just uh, yeah re- recently and a, a month ago six weeks ago that's sad so yeah. we, the, the community lost a, a a great guy out of him and not, yep. ju- not just the racing community i'm also heavily involved in the the hummer community and uh yeah and, 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 and them, I, I, them talking about that as well i 
think I've, I, I know I've said hi to him. He doesn't know who I am. That's completely fine. But I didn't know him, but I knew of him. And I mean, he's raced every Baja 1000 forever. And to lose an icon like that, it's a bummer. You know, so that just, it's kind of cool to see the whole off road community full circle again. You know, Dan came from Desert and somehow him and Dave and, and or Jeff knew each other. And then Dave or Dan kind of got the rings and had a half a dozen camera guys and blah, blah. And then every year it progresses. A few of his main camera guys and whatever are kayakers. It's just funny how they don't even know what an off-road buggy was until they came to Ultra 4 and they're geeked out about it because they are not gearheads. They, you know, they're, they paddle down a river. You know, hey, well, they're more than that. But. You'd introduce me to some of those guys in the media trailer yep. a couple times and they're sitting there. What, what is the, they, they drink PBR, right? Uh, we, they, they we, like yeah, when I go to KOH, we PBR. drink as much PBR as uh, there's unlimited PBR, and we drink it and a lot of it. And it's uh, <laughs> we have a lot. They like they like the party, and I do too. So it's a good fit. But yeah, so most of those guys they're, they're are uh, out a great product still. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we we KOH we behave, because... but then late night in the hours when they're doing their video whatever editing stuff that's when we sit there and drink beer and live shows done and then we we kind of unwind drink some beer and whatnot uh and like i said most of them are kayakers uh steve fisher he's the new producer dan's kind of stepped back and has had steve step in he did last year he was the producer and he he is a Red Bull sponsored athlete for kayaking and he's always done video stuff. And he was, it was the fish reels back in the day. So three or four years ago, if you saw a highlight reel, it was a fish reel. Well, he's kind of stepped up and now he's the new boss. So I kind of have two bosses and then we have Tim. He's, I don't know, he's the guy in my ear. So I've always had an earpiece or your goofy earphones on and that was something hard to get used to also is having something talk to you while you're still talking. It's, it's not easy. I've gotten better at it, but he is really good about not, not, not yelling, not talking. He's like, finish your thought and then talk about this and segue, you know, three, two, one, throw us to commercial. So a lot of the techie stuff is just in my head. A lot of the name dropping is mainly in my head, but all the show flow is I got somebody telling me what to do. Like I said, it was hard to get used to, but it's pretty cool. And uh, they're very chill. And then I think he hits the mute button and, you know, hits the MF for what's the that guy. Why is he still <laughs> rambling? Get, oh, come on. OK, finish your thought, buddy. And then throws to commercial still, you know, whatever. Because sometimes when there's action, it's hard to I can't, you know, whatever. You know, you get excited and I get I get caught up in the moment a lot. But to to see it go from, like I said, I think 2012 was, I'm going to say, six to ten cameras. And now I think there was over 30 cameras in 2019. So it's evolved from that to now there's live live helicopters, live drones. They've got the cable cams. I mean, they literally in the morning will fly the helicopter, pick two or three camera guys up, dump them off at the at the far mountains. And they are stuck there till dark until the helicopter can fly back in because they're so remote. And to be able to uh, Travis Walder, I'm going to brag on him a little bit. He's been with us forever and he's, he's the guy that does, he's the tech guy. He works for Boeing and he's kind of like me. He's worked there forever. He's worked there a lot longer than I've, but uh, he's older than me, but he's very, very, he's the, he's <laughs> the IT guy. In there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's the IT guy behind the scenes and he does the internet. He does all that. So he is Dave Cole's right hand IT guy, but he works very closely with us. So we're, not on the same team but we have to be and uh so he's constantly fighting we bring our own internet to king of the hammers to ridgecrest to all these races and sometimes he runs them literally off a cell phone he's got he's still grandfathered in or something i hope we don't get him in trouble but he's got unlimited internet and he has to ride that line whatever and he'll put it microwaves to go shoot this way this way this way this way but some people say you know complain about hey the video's grainy. Dude, you wouldn't believe I'm not techie. And it blows my mind to see what those guys do in the middle. of. We run completely off a generator at King of the Hammers and bring our own internet, put multiple microwave dishes from one mountain to point at the other mountain because we can't go over this mountain. So we have to go to this one, to this one, to this one. There's four to five to get back to the back canyons that you guys at home are seeing live. Uh, we started in a 
a just a plain Jane and movie. It's in the middle trailer. of the desert. It, it, yeah, it's yeah. the middle of the desert. There's no Yeah, so there's no water, no electricity, and they are putting off a legit TV quality live stream most of the time. I mean, if there's a windstorm, it is what it is. But we started with a legit moving trailer semi for the first three or four or five years. And now he bought an old retired TV semi that has a slide out. And it went from two people up front two people aside to now there's three rows and if you follow me on facebook or instagram i do the behind the scenes quite a bit because it's just cool to see because it still trips me out to see it but there's 20 different camera angles on this tv and there's a they call it a tricaster not sure what that means but oh yeah but they hit a b c d go camera k whatever and so there's that guy that he's just listening to the producer. And the next to him is the audio guy. Behind him is a producer, like I guess you'd call him the commercial guy to keep you honest on, hey, we need to play commercial here to here to here. Behind them are Take It Live. There's two or three of those guys that all they do is they are the ones that that take it from my guys to them to shoot up the internet, whatever that works. But there's three full rows of nine people. And there's so so many pieces of that puzzle that can, if one thing goes wrong, the, the show. Out. I mean, it goes black out. You've seen it. I've seen it. And. I sometimes don't even know what's happening. I'm still talking, and all of a sudden, like, hey, hey, you're back. I'm like, I didn't know we left. <laughs> but uh, so w- there's so much behind the scenes that uh, Dave and the Hammer King production, and Dan and Steve and Tim and Chris and the Lundies and name drop, name drop. There's so many pieces of the puzzle that actually put it together. That's just cool. It's amazing. So uh, the live stream last year, let's see. So this is 19, so eight, so 17 mid season. I got called like, Hey, can you come to Oklahoma this weekend? I'm like, man, I got to work. I'm sorry. And 20 minutes later, instantly I hang up. I call my boss like, Hey, can I take off this weekend? He's like, Oh man. Okay. So I call back like, Hey, I can come. I'm like, Well, we already figured out. Don't worry about it. Thank you. But you're coming to the next race. I'm like, give me that much time. I'll make it work. So then I finished out the season for a couple races and then they call me and be like, hey, can you come to every race in 2018? I was like, done. You give me enough notice, I'll put it in work. They're, I've already talked to my boss. They're cool with it. I'll use vacation where I have to, yada, yada. So we do the the full season live stream 2018. I think I went to eight races, drove to a couple, flew a lot. And I... What a great experience, though. It's cool. I, I've traveled all over the world. Thank you to Hammer King, Dave Cole. They... You know, I went from from I won that competition to it. I got a paycheck, and all that did was cover my travel. So I got a free vacation. That was the coolest thing in the world. To now, they book my tickets, and I get a paycheck. To it, it, it makes it a lot easier for me to leave the wife and kids at home, knowing that I'm my my triple A pays the bills, and now this kind of affords us to do more. And and more family time and whatnot. So the full circle is just really, really, really cool. I was really bummed to hear that they were dropping the the live That's show. Where I, That's where I was uh, going. I was just going to ask. So you. I mean, when I got the phone call, I'm like, huh? All right, that's a bummer. D- Dave called me and. And I was like, dude, I get it, but uh, I'm bummed and I still want to be involved as much as I can. He's like, hey, we're doing the nationals and you're doing KOH for sure. I was like, cool, thank you. And then that was that. And then three days later, he's like, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, next week, can you come do the live, the pre-show, the live show in uh, Southern California? I was like, well, let me call my boss. So I did. He let me off. So I come do the pre-show and then I did – King of the Hammers, which, you know, it used to be six, you know, five or six days. And now it's like a nine or 10 day ordeal. And it, it's great. But I, I was legitimately bummed. And a lot of you guys back at home were, too. And I've got a lot of feedback. And I'm like, I'm, I don't have any any say in it because I'm just the guy that talks. But I, I get it from both sides. The live show was cool. My friends, my family, my fans, not my fans, Ultra 4 fans, yada, yada. The live show was great. But. I heard a three hundred thousand dollar number that that's a lot to swallow just so your friends and family can watch. Uh, you know, so at the end of the day, this is Dave Cole's business. So you have to make those decisions, and it's a hard decision to make because instantly he knew he was going to make a lot of people mad. But it's 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 his business. So who cares what you think? You you've known Dave as long as I have, roughly about the same. And and ha- having known Dave over the last decade, even you know vacation with Dave and stuff. What I know about Dave is he's he's a good businessman. 
He will do some things that we will absolutely question, but he has a reason for it. And most of the time, he ends up surprising the hell out of us in the end. He, it ends up being something because it was something bigger, and he just wasn't ready to invade. I don't, I don't know where. I'll know be where honest. I was, live, live, I was barely nervous for that first race to go off with no live feed because he personally is not on social media. His business is Ultra Four King of the Hammers, and it was just kind of. I was I was nervous. I was bummed, but I was nervous, yeah. and I think it's working out. I, I hope it comes back to a point. We'll see what happens. Anything's out in the open, but I'm really glad to see that uh, the Nationals in Reno will be there and King of the Hammers live show, from what I have been told, those two races for sure for the foreseen future yeah. are here. Yeah. So, uh, But also with social media, some of the teams. I mean, Shirley had a live camera on his, on his race car the last couple of races, and what, there again, the internet's, up. internet's hard to do out there. So we've seen Cody Addington, uh, uh, the Gomez's, lots of the teams are going live on Instagram, live on Facebook. So that costs nothing. They're already there. So if they can Piece limp us together. along to at least keep us involved, because there again, I'm a fan. When I'm at the races, I don't get to watch it. I'm watching it, but I'm so busy in my own brain. I kind of forget what happens until I get back home and kind of relive my weekend and uh, so to to have all the race teams step up and do the the social media is huge and uh, there's a there's a big team behind the scenes that you guys just I see it you guys don't they do an amazing job well, so I'm not you know I'm not no no the, the kid was, to see when Levi Shirley did the live his live streaming out of his car at what was was that Davis? Davis he was. definitely did it, Davis. I think they did it somewhere before that. Where was the first race? The first East race. He did it there too. Where was that one? I'm drawing a blank because I didn't yeah, go. Drawing a blank as well. Listen, it, if some guys out of middle of nowhere, Western Kansas, can figure out how to live stream race car ra- racing out of their out of their car, anyone, everyone else can do it too. Not putting that on anyone. Not setting the bar that high. But here we are. We're you know we're we're talking face to face, and you're 750 miles from me. So almost an Area 51, but yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be one of the Area 51 Raiders. Well, <laughs> the thing is, when this, when this airs, you know, this will be old news then. Yeah, but yeah, right yeah, now it'll, 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 be, it'll be a couple like, weeks. Oh, know what's going on this thing? There, right? So hey, okay, so man, amazing. Thank you for coming on. So let's let's talk about going forward. We're at today. We're at today. We're, we got miles today. You got a couple live shows coming up. Towards First the episode, year. and I, I think you guys are going to like it. I've had fun. Again, our brain is your deal, but we brainstormed for a while. And for it to finally come to light, again, thank you for keeping me involved. I am I will definitely come oh, back on. Boy, we can. First off, we're buddies. Oh, and then I'm yeah. glad to help you or help me, you know, because you're helping me. I'm helping you. I think this is a cool thing. I think we can get some good traction with it. You already have. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna blow it, but uh, you have some pretty cool names that are been coming up in the next few weeks, and uh, I think you guys are gonna like it. Yeah, I, th- I think so. So here we and are. The talent bank, Go, going uh, forward. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> because is it half full, half empty? You know, you, you <laughs> <laughs> so hey, uh, go, go, going forward, I know you. Uh, you had some stuff going with, I think, Gerald at Savvy had uh, invited you to come to Mexico a couple times and race with them. Yep. And the, the first you know, one kind of fell apart a little bit time-wise and whatnot, but I hope to go to, to Nora 500 here in a few months. Yeah, the Ultra 4 things really opened some doors and allowed me to enjoy the off-road community even more. Like I said, yeah, Savvy. And, and when I get to the races, everybody gives me, like, all I wear is Ultra 4 stuff, whether it's team stuff or now every race I get a shirt, yada, yada. So it's really afforded me to to do some pretty cool stuff because uh, I'll stress it again. I'm just a fan of off road and I'm taking advantage of the coolest situation I've ever been dealt. So I'm rolling with it and I'm having fun. You've got, you've got a really good friend uh, over at Nitto with Chris Corbett, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nitto's been on on board for the last I think five years probably, and we've got a good relationship. And uh, I've been a Nitto fan before they were a sponsor, and now they're you know the the title sponsor and. Nitto's really afforded Ultra Four to step up, so it's you know thanks Nitto Chris Corbett for jumping on board, and and the more the merrier, the bigger the better, yada yada. Because I mean I, I I mean just knowing you the way I know you I I mean your closet would be you know nearly barren if it weren't for for Corbett clothing you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, if you don't see me in a, a Nitto King of the Hammers hat. <laughs> Uh, cool. Miles, dude, bro, known you for uh, for a long time. Appreciate you stepping out, stepping in. 
Hey, take, take virtual high five. five. Yeah, yeah. Taking the, 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 the first leap, and we'll get it out there. We'll see how much uh, people can make fun of both of us. Oh, it's easy. <laughs> All right. All right, All right, well, episode one, cut. 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 Thank you for listening and taking a dive into The Talent Tank. Please like and subscribe on Instagram at The Talent Tank or our website, thetalenttank.com.